it's great to be here. And like I was saying before, like RNAO, this is a service we are providing. It's, it's in its infancy. And we do hope that it's going to make a difference in your lives in terms of finding a job. Um, personally, myself, I think I said this the last time, and I'll say it again. I think your vocation is absolutely marvelous in terms of helping to save lives. And I'm glad to be here to help you. And even after my session today, if you need me, I'm a, an email away, sincerely. Okay? Uh, so today, uh, we're talking about interviewing tips. It's my tips. I uh, hope it helps you. I mean, different people may have different things, but I think it sort of um, covers the full gamut. Okay, we need some. Here we are. Uh, today, in terms of our, our my workshop goals for today is um, by the end of the session, you will be able to prepare for a telephone interview and, of course, to be able to do a face-to-face -face interview. And also, along the way, what has happened is that um, Candy has sent me um, a variety of questions that uh, you have posed. And what I thought might be a great idea, my style is very conversational, so at the end of my tips, um, we can speak to those questions in a discussion format. Hope that's okay, and I'm always here to guide. Preparation. Now, like I said, your cover letter and your resume has done its trick. You've gotten the employer's attention, right? And that's great. Now, based on an article I read recently on it's Forbes, uh, actually it was in May, they say out of 100 resumes that are being scanned these days, only 15 are being looked at. And out of that, seven, five of them, they'll say, okay, we'll telephone screen. And then three will actually be asked to come in for a face-to-face -face interview. So that phone interview is quite important. Um, so you've made the first cut. And say you're one of those three, uh, say you're one of those five to seven, my big thing is be prepared. Prepare for a phone screen as if you're preparing for a face-to-face -face interview. Um, I mean, because at this point in time, you've, you've got the qualifications, you've got the hard skills, you've got the technical skills in terms of yourselves as nurses, you've got the clinical experience, et cetera, that they're asking. Because they'll match their requirement with what you've put there, right? So now they're looking for fit in terms of your personality, your communication skills, and of course, in some of those um, skill sets that you've put down there, they want to see the depth of it. Like, um, how can you speak to it? Um, I know it feels really unnatural when you're on that telephone and somebody is somewhere else. It feels very unnatural because you, there's no one for you to actually speak with. Um, actually, it, this will be funny because tomorrow I'm doing a webcast, so it'll be the same idea. I'll be speaking to an audience that's not there. Now, in terms of um, phone screens, sometimes they're prearranged. They, they either send it to email, the book a time, and sometimes they call you direct. So my points to you would be, if they're calling you direct, make sure, make sure that you answer yeah. your phone always professionally. And um, if, you, if you're not there on your telephone, make sure you have a pre-recorded message and a proper pre-recorded message with no dogs barking in the background or kids crying. Like, sincerely, it's amazing. And don't do cutesy, um, like, um, uh, what do we call it, messaging, like with two people and it's, it's all cute. But no, if you're looking for a job, you should be professional. It should be a good message. It should be a good message. Your name should be clear in terms of um, your voicemail and when you can be reached again and when you'll be returning your message. And now, if you, somebody leaves you a voicemail, either through email or voicemail again to them, confirm your time of your phone screen and the date. It's very important. And then the day of the phone screen, make sure you're in a quiet location. I'll tell you a funny story. My son. He's looking for a job, so he's got this phone screen planned. And you know where he did his phone screen? In a mall. Like, really? So, so it's not quiet. Of course, he didn't get the, a face-to-face. -face, but that's because it was noisy. He couldn't hear what the interviewer was saying, and he couldn't answer appropriately. So it's really important. Get a quiet spot so you're ready. Now, like I said before, prepare as if it's a face-to-face -face meeting. Do your research. Now, where do you think you can find information about the hospital or association or healthcare facility? I'm sorry? The online, the website, the news. Um, and make sure, like, I mean, 
one of my first questions when I'm doing a phone screen, I ask, what do you know about the RNAO? So whatever association you're going for an interview for, be prepared. Know that association, know their mandate. Like, and if they're in the news, know a little bit about the news so you can say it. Because they'll ask you, what do you know about us? Well, you can say in the news recently I learned about this, this, and this. And then you can ask their opinion and their view. So it shows that you've got definite interest. And of course, like the, the age-old question um, is that be prepared, know who you are. You know that elevator speech? I've talked about it the last time. That's basically your objective in terms of why you should be hired for this role. Um, I know I've got here, prepare mentally and physically. Some people find, and research have found, that if you physically get dressed up, like you're in that interviewing mode, you're, you're better able to answer questions because you're you're getting into that mode, uh, interviewing mode, I'll be professional, I'll answer these questions very succinctly. So um, get into the mode of interviewing. Even it's on the phone, I know it's on natural, but please be prepared. Um, be personable, be friendly, smile. They say it comes across on the telephone. And it's true, test it. If you're smiling and you know, you've got a good humor and whatnot, your speech pattern will be different. If you're angry, it, show, it comes over on the telephone. Some people in terms of projecting their voice, if they're on the telephone and they're doing a phone interview, uh, standing up, your voice is better carried. So it's a good thing to do when you're having a phone screen. If you're able to, stand up and do it. And here's the thing, know your resume, like inside out. Because a lot of questions will come from that resume. Um, and it's easy for you because you're not, they're not in front of them, right? You've got your resume right in front of you. But please do not read it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you can speak to it, but don't, read it because you can tell you can tell and here's the thing I interview somebody and what they've done they've got their computer in front of them and they're I can physically hear like they're going through the website and they're t I'm asking questions have you heard about this and you can hear it click and then they're reading it what does that tell you about that person unprepared you don't want to be that person <coughs> have a glass of water trust me your voice you, it gets dry. So have a glass of water just in case it does. You take a sip of water. Don't oversell or undersell you yourself while you're on the telephone. Listen to what they're asking. Let, let whatever question they're asking you answer pertinently to the question. Now, in terms of, um, it's, it, okay, I'm, I'm coming to the end of the interview. It all went well and whatnot. And they always ask you to, um, if you've got questions. It's always a good thing to ask relevant questions. And not questions that if you go on the website that you can find. Questions about, say for example, the role itself. What do you think might be a good question to ask an interviewer at the end of a phone screen? This is a phone screen. No, but in terms of like they're trying to see if you're fit for the role, right? Yeah, you can, ask, you can ask it, but that's sort of a tough sort of question to ask, like I mean, at a phone screen, because you're trying to stand up above the crowd, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think a good, normally a good question to ask is about the role, ask about the structure of how the um, disposition, who it reports to, in terms of the overall um, association or uh, healthcare, like how does this position relate back to the structure of the organization? That's usually a good thing, you know, in terms of that you've done your research, like your intent on filling this role, it's a good thing to do. And also, too, what's a good thing is like while you're answering your questions right after the phone screen, write down the sort of questions that they've asked you. Because trust me, when you're having that face-to-face, -face, what they're doing, they're going to expand on those questions. So it gives you a good idea of the type of questions that they will be asking. Now, here's the face-to-face. -face. And like I said, dress professionally and comfortably. You dress for success. You have only one time to make a first impression. And I always say too, it's better always to overdress than underdress. Make sure like us as ladies in the, in the winter time, if you're wearing a dress, you come in, if your boots are not appropriate, if it's dirty, walk with an extra pair of, sho walk with an extra pair of shoes. Be kind to that receptionist at the front. They'll tell you where to put, where the closet is, where you can take off your boots, put on your proper shoes. They'll 
go to the ladies' room, freshen up, because you're wanting to make a good impression. Um, I took this, the liberty of putting up this image of um, dress for success. I mean, I know in the nursing field there's a tendency of people to be a bit um, more casual, but like I said before, it's always better to overdress than underdress. Good hygiene, shower, clean clothes, comb your hair. You'll be surprised. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Um, I had an incident where I had a woman come in and uh, she came in for, um, uh, for an opportunity. And this is a lady. She comes in, hair totally disheveled. It was summertime, so it's not winter, so no, no forgiving there. She had no purse. And like her, um, the clothing was all, was just not right. And the role was for like a front facing role. So bad image. Although she was so good on paper, that face to face, if you know you're going to be in a face to face kind of a role and you're going to dress inappropriately, it takes points off. Not a good thing to do. So always, um, good hygiene. It's always a good thing. And when you're coming in for an interview, it's also a good thing to bring extra copies of your resume because sometimes what happens is that it happens in a, at our interview many times. Our CEO might decide, you know what, I want to sit in into this interview. So it's always a good thing. And it shows great uh, initiative on your part and say, hey, I've got, a, I've got a, an extra copy. Um, in terms of the interview, too, and it's, it's very practical. My suggestions are very practical in terms of what I'm telling you. It's something that uh, you all know, so it's great reminders, right? Because I think you're all right now looking for a position or at least will be looking for a role soon. Um, arrive about 10 minutes before your meeting face-to-face. -face. You may do this because you may need to park. Um, you also may need to, um, there might be delay in transit if you're using the subway system and, or the GO train, like heck, that can be more than 10 minutes. Um, and I said before, be friendly to the receptionist. We all have um, cell phones. Make sure we switch them off. It's very, very rude when you're in conversation with somebody and the cell phone goes off. Uh, greet your interviewer in a friendly manner. Strong handshake. Look the person in the eye. Of course, exchange pleasantries. Um, be positive. Stay positive. Okay, the weather might be lousy. Like, you know, don't fret about it or say, you know, this, whatever, you know, like it's, 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 yes, it's natural and you can say, but be positive. It's a good thing. Like, I mean, if you come in and you're really depressed about it, it's like your energy, you look for energy. When you're looking for a person, you're making a first impression. People are looking for passion. They're looking for energy. Um, listen to the interviewer and then answer their questions. It makes sense, right? And of course, stay relaxed and calm. Uh, during the interview, try to keep the, like look at the interviewer. Like I mean, uh, keep eye contact, smile, be natural, be yourself. Don't sound too rehearsed. I've, I am experiencing this quite a bit because of technology and on the web. There are so many suggestions of how to handle yourself in terms of interviews and whatnot. And sometimes people prepare so much that when they come in, you ask a question, and it's so divergent to what you are asking them. So be natural. Really listen to what the question is being asked. And sometimes, of course, there'll be times that you don't know the answer to a question. Don't try to fib. They'll catch you. Because what has happened, like, I mean, sometimes I conduct panel interview. I, I mean, I don't have all of the science background, right? But we'll have science-related questions. And I'll ask a question, and I mean, I don't know the answer, but I've got experts in the room that do. And uh, so know your stuff. And if you don't know an answer, like I said before, don't fib. Tell them you don't know. But you know what? I'll research for research it, and I'll let you know. And a good thing to do is after you get back, email them. This is what I, based on my research, this is what I've discovered. It sets you again here again above the crowd in terms of um, taking the time to do it. Now, during the interview, like I was saying before, in terms of panel interviews, you may have three people interviewing you, asking you a different question. When you're answering that question, keep eye contact with that person, and, but others are there too. In terms of that whole interviewing process, make sure you have eye contact with at least every one of them, even for an instant. It's good to keep eye contact with everybody that you're connecting with every one of them. Speak clearly, breathe, and 
don't be afraid. If they ask you a question and you need time to think and collect your thoughts, silence is a good thing. Like, don't be intimidated by it. Just, you're trying to think, get your thoughts together. It's better to be silent and think and give a clear answer than to blurt something that's not correct. Here's the thing, don't try the joke thing. I can't tell a good joke, so don't try it. I would say avoid jokes until it, unless it feels right. Um, some people can do it really nicely. I, I, in an interview situation, I wouldn't try it. Uh, now, we are almost at the end in terms of questions, and I think we've sort of talked about it, but prepare a few questions. We have a few questions at uh, the phone screen stage, and I think you ask about challenges, right? You were saying that challenges might be a good thing, and I suggested perhaps not at that stage, but here's a perfect stage, because you're seeing them face to face. You've gotten an idea of what the role is all about. Um, here's a great time to ask in terms of a challenge. What will be the challenges in terms of this role? Like the way they see it, like, I mean, what has past incumbents talked about, you know what I mean? But because you, you've sort of warm, warm up to them, and it's a sort of a, it feels right for you to ask the question, that question at this stage of the game. Um, and now, what's really good is that while you're having this discussion, if you've taken notes, if there's certain points that, um, that, that you know, you weren't clear on, and you've jotted it down, here's a great time to ask. Because it'll show that you were listening intently, but you've missed a few points but you're really interested in this role and you want clarification. It, it's really good. It's terrific that you ask. It's a big plus because um, here again, it's standing out from the rest. Because these days, like I said, the statistics shows like so many people, you're down to three in, the, in terms of that face-to-face -face, and you wa you're wanting to be that number one. Of course, here in terms of that, uh, after the whole uh, interview, ask about next steps. Um, most HR managers or directors, they'll tell you the next steps, what the next steps are. It could be that you're interviewing more people. They might give you a timeline in terms of when they'll get back to you. So yeah, um, exit and end the meeting with a good handshake to everybody. It's a good thing. And a smile. Um, now after the interview, send a thank you note. Don't sit on the subway and send a thank you note or like just say thank you for the interview. And don't do it the same day. Do it the next day. It shows that you've, you've sort of think it through, that yes, this is the role for me. And, uh, you know, and, I, and here again, reiterate why you want to be in this role. And if you've discussed something that's of really great interest to you and though you've made a connection, in your thank you note, talk about it. Now, in terms of follow up, um, a good follow up would be like, say, in a week. You just you're just checking the status of the, like of the role, like where they're at. Um, be patient. I know sometimes you interview well, you think you've got great rapport with, this, with all of the people there. Like, I mean, so what's taking them so long? Be patient, because if you're the right one, they'll find you. They really will find you. And, and like I said, if you are the right one, congratulations, you've landed the job. Um, my style, I like doing like a quick synopsis in terms of tips of do's and don'ts. My do's are be prepared, listen, be calm, smile. It's always a good thing to smile. Um, in terms of don'ts, um, don't be late. Uh, don't use slang words and don't use uh, swear words. Like, please, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I know, you know what happens sometimes, and this has happened to me. I have candidates that will relax, like perfectly relaxed, and you know, everything is going fine. And then the, the description start getting very, very colorful. And it's like, really? <laughs> you know, like, yes, uh, you're comfortable, but this speech pattern is not what we would want for somebody in customer service. So, yeah. And, and, and also, don't mention salary. Sometimes, though, I've, has anybody ever asked you what salary you're expecting? Or what do you normally say? Do you normally say what the salary is? Good. My encouragement would be, um, don't don't mention salary. I think uh, normally a nice answer I always say is that um, uh, um, I'm negotiable and I'm sure your company will be offering something that's fair and equitable and it's market rate. Can't go wrong. When you're getting that offer. When they call you, when they, yeah, when they call you and say, hey, you know what, you're my candidate of choice. That's a good time. 
and you don't ask it first, let them tell you what they're planning, like what the, the salary will be. Yeah. Um, now, these are the questions, that the following are the questions that have come from Candy and Lisa, and I think they, she got them from you guys, right? So uh, I thought as a group, we can all look at these questions, and we can sort, I'll, I'll give you my answer, and if you've got any sort of feedback, or we can all share what you've experienced so far. Is that okay? All right. So our first question in interviews, what are some common questions, especially in regards to the nursing profession? Now, in terms of, there's no generic answer. Like, it all depends on the role that you're going after. I mean, if it's, um, if it's pediatric nursing, it'll center around feeds. If it's uh, labor and delivery, it'll center around that. So you have to look at the job description, look at the skill sets that they're looking for, and those are the questions they'll be asking you about and what your experience has been. So that's what I would think it would be in terms of that question. Um, how to answer a question, situation question properly or conflict situations? Who has been faced with that and what do you think in terms of conflict situation? How did you deal with that, Gagan? Commendable. That's really good. That's that's really good, Gagan, and that's that's a good thing. And of course, in terms of all these resolutions, there was a problem, there was a solution, there's a good answer, there's a reason for why this happened. Great, there is an answer for it. Also and in, in terms of all these action and result, you stayed calm and collected. And there was an, if there was something that hampered a relationship, you have to sort of mention that there was, the relationship continued. Yeah. Conflict happens. Because normally what they're looking for is how you handled it. Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you know what you do, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like prepare your star answers and use them at different times, but make sure it's appropriate. Make sure it's appropriate to what they're asking. But it's a, that's a great methodology in terms of the star approach. Now, and here's a question in terms of weaknesses. How about weaknesses? How do you handle weaknesses? <laughs> I feel like Oh, I, you know what? You know what? Yeah, go ahead. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. Like, I mean, and I agree with you, and it is really a, not a nice word, like the weaknesses. It's not a good word. Um, and none of us are experts in everything. So you know what, be honest in terms of there is something that you're actually developing, honestly talk about it. But um, don't show how bad you are. You know, you know what I mean? Like we all have weaknesses, but we are developing it. I have been weak in this area, but I've been learning how to deal with it. And this is what I've been doing in order to get better. It's, it's always, we are all learning. And as students, we are always well. There's always a learning. And uh, like I said before, none of us are perfect. Education is always continuous. Um, what do you look for when you interview s someone? What stands out for you? I look for passion. I really do. Passion, energy, enthusiasm. Like, I mean, if that comes across when a candidate enter, they're going to have that same passion and energy. And you, as, an, as a good manager, you hope that manager keeps that passion and, and engagement. But that's what I look for personally. Passion enthusiasm, and attitude. You've got the right attitude. Like, I mean, I've heard many managers have said it, and I always say it to managers too, you really can, like attitude, you cannot buy, you cannot teach. You have to have it. And in order to have that attitude, you've got to be passionate about the job or position you're in. Um, in terms of what are some of the methods that 
interviewers use to evaluate a candidate. Personally, at RNAO, what we do, we do sort of a, um, a numbering system, like we point and score. Uh, we, we put certain points to certain questions in terms of like, okay, how to dealt with this technical skills, we'd score them out of five, you know what I mean? And every candidate will do the same thing. So it's a very, very fair process. Uh, some interviewers, like, I mean, they get this halo effect of candidate. They come in, they are, they're bright, they're sharp, they're enthusiastic. You know, some people go for that, especially if you're looking for sales. If you're looking for sales, you're looking for all that, yeah? Um, in terms of hospitals and clinical, I'm thinking you're looking for not only for clinical um, experience, but you're looking for how can that person, you're looking for interpersonal skills, right? And that interpersonal skills, you can tell right away from a panel interview how they're going to be dealing with those, the, the panel members. Yes, Gagan. Mm. Yeah. yeah, language is good, and you're probably wondering where Gagan is saying about this language. The language is always in their website. And if you go on that company website and you read a couple of their, um, in terms of their, um, uh, their reasons to why they exist, like in terms of their core values, you can get it right there, and you can get the lingo from there. So, and be prepared, like I mean, and every job, like I said the last time, is that every job, every resume, you have to gear it towards that hospital or that job. So it cannot be generic. You've got to make it, what they're looking for should be there. What's the difference between the first and second interview, and do they look, and do they look for different things? The first interview is that You've got everything that they're looking for in terms of skill sets, in terms of uh, sort of fit for that role that you're fit. Now, the second interview, what they sometimes do, they bring out members from the unit itself. Like these are people that are hands-on. And they can be like somebody like the receptionist. They can be somebody from the mailroom. All they're looking for is how you're going to relate to somebody that's completely different. And sometimes they might not even tell you the title of these people. So my thing to you is treat everybody with respect dignity because you don't know who that decision maker could be who could influence the decision to maker at that point in time in terms of the second interview so always be on your toes you don't have that job until you get that offer panel interviews and what can you do to prepare for a panel interview it's the same thing like i mean it's the only thing instead of one person you have three to four you just make sure that you're ready and you, you just have to be prepared in terms of the panel. Because they're all, normally what they do though is that in terms of panel, you've got to listen even more intently. Because somebody might ask one question and another person might interpret that question very differently. So you might have them, you may have that sometimes too, but you, you just have to listen and answer to every person, answer every person to the question they're asking, answer that question. Yeah, it's, it's a bit tougher because normally sometimes, like I said, even the panel members sometimes have a difference of, what they're asking. It could be a trick sometimes too to see how you can deal with um, confrontation or different in meeting situations. Any ex extra advice, tips on how to make a good impression? Um, I would say everything that I've discussed so far. Dress for an interview, be prepared, uh, be passionate about the job that you're going for, be enthusiastic, have good energy. That's my advice, it really is, and do your research. And if they're, if, what's a good thing sometimes to do too is um, if you're going for an interview and they tell you who the members of the panel is, go on LinkedIn, research them, know them a little bit about, you know, about uh, who they are and what they've done in terms of their background. So this way, when you're having that conversation, sometimes your accomplishments or some of the tasks that you've done, it mirrors what they've done. So you can even sometimes draw that parallel and say, oh, and by the way, I remember, perhaps you can remember when you were at this position here, it equates to what I was doing here. It's a good thing to do. Uh, Midman, I guess I'm thinking you're thinking about, I don't know who asked this question, but I guess you're probably thinking about agencies or, yeah. Hiring agencies? Hiring agencies? Yeah. Don't, treat, don't treat them any differently because they are really representing the client. And the same way, same, it's the same as if it's the um, hiring manager or if it's the hospital, the same way. The only thing with um, agencies or whatnot, they'll have, um, in terms of the salary, they might know the salary. And I, I'm going to share this with you. 
agency works on the basis of they, they're fee based, right? And uh, the higher the salary that they get for you, they'll get a percentage of that. So always be wise to that. Uh, so they'll like when you're going for that position, if you want that role, don't be sidestepped in terms of um, the salary might be lower. If that's the job that you want, make it clear to that um, uh, agency person that you want this position. Okay, that's wh that's what I've learned from experience, and I thought I'll share it with you. Um, RNAO, we all know, it's our professional association for registered nurses in Ontario. It's a strong, credible voice leading the nursing profession to influence and promote healthy public policy and clinical excellence. And of course, like you all know, we've got the best practices guideline. Um, in terms of reminders, um, at RNAO, we've got the AGM going on April 17th at the Hilton. You're cordially invited, each one of you. And of course, also too, we've got this Career Expo um, and Professional Development Showcase. It's happening on Friday, May 15th. And um, I'll be there and I'll be doing the same sort of a um, presentation to uh, nurses from a lot of um, associations and whatnot in different schools. But I'll also have a panel. I'll have about uh, 10 nurses. And they've all been out there working in the field. They've all interviewed. They've all hired people. Some of them may be a little bit younger and they may not be, um, have hired people, but they would just have gone through the interviewing stage. So they'll be there to share their experience with you. If you've got your resume ready and if you would like for them to have a look at it and to give you their um, opinion, um, go on our website and uh, enroll. And it'll be great for you to come out and um, we'd love to help you out. Okay? Um, uh, again, reminders in terms of volunteering at the RNAO, be a student ambassador, um, get involved at the local chapters. Um, uh, like I said before, you get a chance to meet uh, the executives and the leaders. Um, participate in, the, in terms of the best practices guidelines, uh, be a stakeholder reviewer. Um, and in terms of uh, interest groups and community events, it's a good thing to do. It's always good to volunteer in terms of these chapters because you never know who you meet. and. Uh, Network, network, network. It's all about networking. Questions? Discussion? Yeah, hi. Yeah. There's a lot of applications, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, good question. Um, here's the thing. What's your name? Anna. Here's the thing. Like, I mean, looking for a job is a job in itself. It really is. And uh, in terms of those 20 applications that you're putting out there, my advice is the same. You, you do not do it generically. You need to stand out. You need, if I'm as the person hiring you, I need to know you've got an interest in my association and you've got an interest in this role. And you need to illustrate it. And the only way you'll illustrate that is like what I talked about before. And also, and I didn't say this before, um, you're applying for 20 jobs, keep a record of it. No, truly, keep a record of it because sometimes you get that phone screen. Don't go, um, mm, what? Just confirm and say, just to confirm um, uh, the role is, and let them tell you, and, and just to confirm what's the association or what's the company again, yeah, put it back on them. I know in your sent box you'll have a record, but um, I'm old fashioned. I'll, I'll put that, I'll also write it down just in case my system is down or something, and yeah. Keep a log of every job that you're applying for. Anything else? Hey, it's good to see you. You were here the last time. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's good to see males in, in this profession. It's a good thing. Yeah. Hey, did you notice, uh, just for you, I put a slide in there with a male. <laughs> Anything else? Is there any other question? No? Well, good luck to every one of you. And like I said at the start, I'm an email away, dsaran at rnao.ca. 
So good luck.